I'm happy to be here to share our experience from Cambodia. So first, let's start with an overview of uh, the disease and the, the treatment. So uh, uh, hepatitis C can be ac uh, acute, but not most of patients become chronic. And then the chronic infection lasts a lifetime and leads to serious liver problems, including cirrhosis or liver cancer. And there are six genotypes. In Cambodia, we mainly have genotype six and genotype one. And then there is uh, the revolutional treatment options in recent years com coming out. It's direct acting antivirus. The cure rate can be uh, as high as 95%. So in Cambodia, we use a soft and DAC combination. It's pan genotyping, it's uh, efficacious, it's safe, and the patient needs to receive a treatment for three or six months and to reach the 95% of cure rate. However, DAAs in resource-constrained countries, the experience is limited, and a significant proportion of patients lack of access to treatment. So with this background, uh, MSF launched the uh, hepatitis C clinic in Precosamec Hospital in Phnom Penh in September 2016. Very quickly, the clinic was overwhelmed by patient load and was unable to face this situation because of uh, uh, the space constraints. And uh, what was uh, even worse was the waiting time to get a result. It took one week for serology test result, two months for viral load, and three months for genotype. Uh, so it was decided to put a quota on new patients uh, and uh, to prioritize to treat F3 to F4 patients. But still, waiting list continue growing, and we, uh, we uh, quickly uh, the waiting list increased to over 3,500 patients, and we finally had to stop uh, to screen new patients until we, uh, we finish the backlog until uh, July. So you can see from this graph, uh, <laughs> at the beginning we had a, a, okay, we had 50 visits per day, and they quickly, uh, grow to uh, more than 200 visits per day and with only four doctors. Okay, let's see what was our model at the beginning. Uh, this was based on the ESO guideline in 2016. You can see uh, the visits um, uh, including the uh, labs, counseling, consultations, and it allow us to provide uh, some services uh, for the cirrhosis complications management. So from uh, screening to cure, uh, patients need to make uh, 16 visits. And uh, a turnaround time between the first visit and treatment initiation was about three months. So keep in mind, we have 3,500 patients waiting for the treatment, and at least this continue growing. So we had to figure out a better way to serve our patients faster, but without jeopardizing the quality of care. So first question. Can we simplify the test algorithm? Can we stop genotyping? So we have the uh, uh, main, uh, majority of the, the, uh, the, the patients with genotype one and genotype six. Genotype one was uh, uh, very well studied uh, about uh, the efficacy of soft DAC uh, uh, combination, uh, but we knew little about genotype six. So we demonstrated the effectiveness of a soft DAC on genotype six. And uh, from uh, then on, we, we decided we can safely stop uh, genotyping. Uh, uh, geno uh, which, uh, genotyping was taking three months to obtain and the cost 70 US dollar. And then uh, furthermore, we did the operator, operational research on uh, gene expert viral load uh, on genotype six. So we were able to switch from central testing to uh, gene expert viral load point of care. So uh, instead of uh, waiting for one to two weeks for the result, the patient can get uh, the result in one day and we save $80. And we also switched from uh, ELISA to SD BioLearn on capillary blood. Uh, it even uh, make the uh, screening faster and easier. So by all that, uh, uh, the diagnosis of a viramic patients can be obtained in one day instead of three months, and the cost of a screening decreased from 170 US dollar to less than 20 US dollar. And also adapt our criteria for endoscopy and ultrasound to simplify the algorithm um, even more. 
And then finally, we decided to keep fiber scan because we find the fiber scan result is strongly correlated with failure and the complicated cases. Also, fiber scan is a fairly easy to uh, to perform, and it's much easier to uh, to use to define fibrosis stage than uh, using lab tests. So fiber scan stay. And then we did uh, more changes in patient, man uh, patient management. We separate screening from uh, treatment activity to have a better, uh, to have a more uh, efficient patient flow. And we did task shifting from doctor to nurse or pharmacist. And we remove less clinical meaningful visits. So now we finally reach our current simplified model. If you don't remember, how many visits our patients need to do. On the top was the full model, and uh, to compare with the full model, the bottom is the current simplified model. So first visit, second visit, third, fifth, and sixth, and that's it. So we, uh, uh, with a total of six visits, including one medical consultation. Uh, and, uh, so, we reduced the visits from 16 to 6, and the doctor visits uh, now is only one with a simplified model. The, do uh, the patients only need to see the doctor at uh, the initiation. So we reduce uh, uh, the turnaround time between the first visit and treatment initiation become less than one week, and uh, it can be even uh, uh, within a couple of days. What about the impact on treatment? Uh, as we made a such big change. So we can see the treatment initiation per month. We uh, increase from 150 maximal uh, with four doctors to, to now over 400 patients uh, with the three doctors. And you can see there's uh, like low bars because at that point we had a near uh, uh, stock rupture, so we had to limit the number of initiation. And then the median days between screening and initiation reduced from uh, more than three months to nowadays less than one week. And uh, impact on patient safety and outcome. Serious adverse event occurrence is very low, and uh, when the adverse event occur, uh, the majority are due to uh, cirrhosis complications. And minor side effects uh, are rare. It facilitates good adherence and uh, sustain the viral response at 12 weeks after treatment uh, finish uh, was 69%. Uh, uh, consider we have more than 80% of patients with uh, advanced fibrosis. So after hearing our experience, actually, uh, the, this, uh, on the way of simplification, we are trying to balance the two uh, questions, expanding treatment to all or manage cirrhosis, treat the cirrhotic. What, what would you choose when you see these two options? So what if I say uh, by manage the cirrhosis and treat the cirrhotic, your team need to do 5,000 ultrasounds and 2,500 endoscopies next year. <coughs> And uh, as a consequence, your team capacity to treat patients decreased from 25,000 to 5,000. Uh, but uh, in the same time, you're able to diagnose 300 cancer patients and perform 1,250 ligatures, which might be life-saving. Also by doing that, you actually manage to reduce uh, the number of to uh, reduce the number of uh, F4 patients that you're treating from 7,500 to uh, 5,000. And by doing that, you also manage, you didn't manage to uh, increase the life year you saved, you actually reduced the life a year saved by, uh, uh, by, by a third. So at this point, what would you choose? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so uh, from uh, our experience, we had some lessons learned. First, uh, simplification is essential in delivering hepatitis C treatment for the patients in resource-limited context. And care quality can be maintained through simplification. And the benefit gained from simplification and scale-up treatment outweigh the potential benefit of cirrhosis management model. Thanks for the team. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>